When Jason Charles was growing up, his mom told him in an emergency she would grab their photo albums. He had another plan. I developed this little bag with like my toys and, and you know, it wasn't a real bug out bag, it was just the kids. And that was the first time I started um, diving into prepping. The New York City firefighter is a prepper and proud of it. It's just a person who wants to be prepared for whatever disaster or emergencies might happen. Charles has supplies in his apartment for six months and a storage unit with six to nine months of goods. After spending $5,000, he stopped keeping track of his budget. And COVID struck, and then the civil unrest, the riots, right? Um, now they're talking about food shortage later this year. Charles runs the Angry Prepper YouTube channel, which has almost 30,000 subscribers. He shows off his gear and tests out his escape route. He demos making supplies like Inferno bricks. He's also been featured on National Geographic's Doomsday Preppers. And you should think the worst is going to happen. Charles might not be most people, but 20% of Americans said they have spent money on survival materials, according to review site Finder. Sales of luxury bunkers are up. The Vivos Group said business has increased 600%. Its Indiana bunkers start at $35,000. Is thinking of the worst case a bad thing? Lenox Hill Hospital neuropsychologist Brittany Lemonada said not necessarily. When we think about it, preparation, um, whether it's for something good or for something bad, is a goal-oriented behavior that in many situations is incredibly helpful and positive. What drives people to prep is our instinctual feelings of fear. It's all in our heads. Primal parts of our brain, like the amygdala, which is um, center of emotion and fear response, is triggered before um, some of our higher cortical areas um, that can help us appraise a situation and actually assess if it really is a danger. So we get this emotional re response before we get the cognitive, um, more thought out response. Lemonada said people with a history of trauma or anxiety are more likely to react this way, or people who feel helpless or don't trust authority. It can become um, unhealthy too, um, if the thoughts or behaviors start to interfere with your daily life or your ability to get work done, your relationships with people. If you're feeling overwhelmed, Lemonada says meditation helps. So does eating well, going outdoors, and sleeping. To take some time to, to not look at the news or media at all throughout the day because um, you can just get bombarded with information. As for Charles, he thinks we should all stay vigilant. Now's the time to do more before the hammer drops. But I don't think the hammer's dropped yet. I don't think we've seen anything yet. Michelle Castillo, Cheddar.